All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another free-to-play Raid Shadow Legends Champion Spotlight. And today, we are going to be reviewing Crimson Slayer. Um, she's definitely one of the heroes that I thought was going to not be good. Uh, I remember playing back in the day, and I was always see her, and I'd always get her for some reason. I always pulled her. She's like one of those heroes that just always pops up. And I was like, eh, she's all right. Like, she's got... On paper, she looked like she had a really good kit, and that was it. I mean, it didn't seem like she was really helping me out. Granted, I had only gotten her like 40, maybe 50 on most of my old accounts. Uh, as far as my current account, she is a free-to-play Mystery Shard only pull champion. Like, she is one of my favorite heroes at this point because she has helped me in completing numerous parts of the game that have really held me back. Um, now, what I found out about her is that from the beginning, you're going to want to put her in lifesteal. Um, and that's at least from the progression that we've done. Obviously, there's better ways. If you have better healers than me, if you're obviously not just summoning mystery shards, if you have better ways to keep her alive, then lifesteal may not be the option for you. However, we are using her in scenarios that require her to have it. Um, one of those you know, scenarios would be the Fire Knight's Castle. And the other one of those scenarios would be the Spider's Den, Stage 15. Now, we've got her in Lifesteal. Uh, most of the stuff isn't very high-end. Uh, I don't really have too much on her. I do have a few four-star pieces on her. She's 35,000 power. We could definitely do some upgrading here. I think the last piece that we put on her was this. This was the, um, what is it, 5% chance to counterattack, which is actually very good. Uh, but other than that, I haven't given her a lot of new upgraded pieces. We definitely want to upgrade her chest, and we definitely want to upgrade her speed. It is possible that I would even consider switching her over into a defensive chest just so that she can last longer in some of the later dungeons because now we're getting into areas where the enemies hit really hard and we don't have Sil yet. That'll be changing in about two days. But either way, life steals the way to go on her right now for at least the early mid game. Now, total stats, we've got her at 32,428 HP. We've got her at a decent HP because we want her to be a little bit higher than our tank for Spider. It's unfortunately part of what it has to be. Luckily, it doesn't really affect her because it just means she needs to have higher HP. Uh, it affects Zephyr more than it affects her. Uh, attack is 3,391. We do not have a blessing on her. That's weird. Hmm. No, we do have a blessing on her. <laughs> I forgot I don't have the upgraded version. Uh, so we don't have the blessing yet, so she'll get another 300 attack once we get that up. Uh, defense, she's got 2,000 defense. Reasonable, not great. Uh, speed, 159. Very low right now. We definitely need to get that up, which is part of the reason why the boots are slow. Um, so once we get like a 5 or 6 star, we can probably build that up a little bit. Crit rate is at 90%. Not perfect, but good. Uh, crit damage, 128. Also, not amazing, but, you know, decent. Uh, resistance is 92, and accuracy is 90. Also, stats that we need to get fixed a little bit for the later dungeons. We do need her to start landing her skills, and unfortunately, the bosses are getting higher and higher resists, so we're going to need higher, higher accuracy in order to, you know, match that. Uh, as far as skills go, she's got a three-time hitter on the A1, which is why she is amazing for Fire Knight. She can sleep enemies during the waves, and she's got a three-hitter for the shield. Very good, especially when paired with her, her masteries, which will give her extra hits. Uh, and she sleeps. So she is a staple of my tag team arena defensives. Um, I use her all the time to fight. She's great at putting, like, you know, uh, who are those two that are always in there? Ultimate Death Knight and uh, Deliana. Pretty much anybody who's annoying Siffy. If her resistance isn't too high because I don't have high accuracy, but once I do, I can hit her too. Uh, great for Paragon. Like <clears throat> These are all things that you know the sleep buff is great for. Uh, attacks one enemy and has a 70% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter. This is why she's in our spider team. She can reduce the turn meter, which is very important. The only wonky thing about this is her AI is messed up, and you will have to program her in the team screen to make sure that she actually uses this skill because it's the one skill that she very rarely will use in uh, PvE areas. And then you've got the heal reduction, which is great for many, many dungeons, actually. Uh, mostly, though, Spirit Potion Keep and the Fire Knight as well. Even though she rarely hits it for some reason, 
recently she's been hitting it on the higher levels because we're using more turn meter reduction to win. Uh, so that way she actually does land her HP, um, her heal reduction. She does have the Phantom Touch Blessing. We want her to do more attack and her her aura is 17% attack and faction crypts. Masteries. We went down the support tree side. We definitely got her some cooldown reduction things, uh, some, some turn meter reduction, because that's all the stuff that we want on her. Uh, we also gave her a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff she casts, so that's good. And then we went straight down to War Master on the offensive side. That way she can get her War Master procs off and do a little bit more damage, and obviously all the you know crit, crit damage, things like that. Now, where do we use her? Obviously, we use her in Faction Wars. Unfortunately, I'm not in that faction today, but... Either way, we do use her in there. She's very good uh, for clearing waves. And mainly, our big thing, here we'll just look in, in Arena. So, when we do battles, uh, I can't do it. Uh, I forgot I used them all. So, when we do that, we put her in. I believe she's in my mid team, my, my middle team. And she is great for when you're up against the uh, more annoying teams, like I said. So, we do use her there. We don't use her in Classic Arena because we have better teams for, for the single team. Uh, but her main bread and butter is these dungeons. So, Spider. If you are having trouble with Spider 15, she could be your answer to your fifth hero. Now, I just ran this, and our best time... Here we go. I actually missed it. 15. Our best time was 4 minutes and 8 seconds. It's, it's a little bit of a slower fight, but if you're having trouble with Spider, you can go back and watch one of my Spider battles, and uh, you'll see where, really where she shines. I'm not going to go into detail on how to beat the Spider on this video, just showing you where I do use her. Um, we did, like I said, we went into team setup, and we did have to adjust her so that her Flowing Sword is the number one priority, because we want her to always be doing turn meter reduction in here, otherwise the spider gets more turns, and then heals, and then kills us, and we hate it. Now, I don't know if, the, I don't think this is a 100% team. I know that I have lost on it a few times, but we did just upgrade all of our heroes' masteries and ascensions, so I don't know if that changed the fact that it happens. So I don't know. I haven't died since then. We could have a loss here. The only thing that causes a loss in this fight is if one of my damage dealers gets stunned or something like that happens and they don't get a chance to attack again. And then, unfortunately, their HP will drop below Zephyr Snyder Snipers and the spiders will target them. Now, if another hero kills them, look at that. Look at that damage you just did. Um, if another hero can heal themselves back up and kill the spiders then it won't it won't matter now armor girl is obviously in there for turn meter reduction soul bonds in here for turn meter reduction uh zephyrs here is their tank um spirit host is in here because she doesn't die and ooh, there we go and crimson slayer the star back there uh, is good for clearing out some spiders because we want some spiders to be dead basically we want to alternate kind of as to which spiders are dead and which ones aren't. Now, see, she healed back up, and that's what you want to avoid. So now that we're past that first heal, the point here is you want to keep her turn meter down long enough to do enough damage before the spider will heal again, and then you can beat the fight. So this is a great place for Crimson Slayer. I honestly didn't think she would be good in here for, for Spider 15, but she really showed that she can hold up with a lot of the other ones. There you go. Flowing Sword, decreased turn meter. That's what we want. We want this spider to not take turns, and there you go, Solbon. She does a full reduce, which is even just as good, actually better, but she's a little bit slower on her turns, which is the only downside. Look at that. 50k damage on her, and she's not even built like 100%. She has reasonable gear, not a lot of glyphs. We can definitely do more with her. Our, uh, our Great Hall is not maxed on Spirit. We're basically just working on Magic Heroes right now, so she doesn't have any of those bonuses. She does have a few bonuses from the Faction Guardians. I don't know how many. I think it's one of the... I think Knight's Revenant actually is full. I think I have that one full. That's Executioner. So we did farm him up, so she does have full, full bonuses from there. So she got a nice little 10% attack, 10% defense, and HP. See, this is where it gets a little scary. Hopefully your heroes get a turn. See, like right now... We're in limbo. As long as the spiders don't attack like they are now, see? This is what could cause you to lose, but now she's going to go again. And there you go. Back up to full health, and we are back on track. So those are the only things that can kind of cause a problem. Hopefully, you would have somebody who can increase turn meter and do things like that. It would make this fight a little easier. I have tried this with Haikatoon as my lead, but 
it just doesn't work because she won't stay alive right now because I don't really I didn't really build her that well. Um, she's only level fifty. She's not one of my priorities right now. But yeah, Princess Slayer is she's she's been rocking in this in this fight for a while. Um, she may or may not appear in my level sixty. I mean, in my uh, stage twenty fight. I'm not sure yet. We haven't gotten there yet. We're working on seventeen, so I need a tank, a magic tank to do it. And I think I have one. I just haven't built it yet. So we're going to be working on that. And we are getting uh, Sill. So Sill would be a very good addition to our spider team as well. We'll see how that goes in the future. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. There's obviously better options. We're not, this is not a video about, you know, having the best heroes. This is a video spotlighting a free to play hero that you can use to beat certain content in this game that will help you beat it. And she sleeps some of the spiders, which is even better because it also stops it from doing turns. Anything that stops anything from moving is good in this. Obviously, stun is better, but sleep works. And this is kind of the best case scenario right there. You want to have a few spiders that are down to a very light health. There you go. Ah, oh, there you go. Decrease Terminator. She's doing it again. There you go. Even better. See? And this is how you beat Spider by making sure that it doesn't get turns. Which who would have thought, right? That if a boss doesn't get turns, it's easier to beat them. So now it really just depends on how fast we beat it. If we get more turn meter reduction or if they can kill them quicker. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Okay, decrease turn meter. Good. There we go. It's dead. So there you go. And we've got Solbon who did 2 million. Zephyr who did 2 million. And Crimson in third place here but soul bond is kind of a monster and i do have her attack power insanely high right now uh because she is also in um lifesteal as well so yeah definitely good for spider the other places that she does well in if you're having trouble beating it is fire knight now we did use her in stage 15 this team was weird i put them in like this i think this team worked well i put the wrong heroes in here before um but for 17, which is where we're at, and we're red, this is the team that we used, um, I believe. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I have it in here. So we are in there. Good. <laughs> so this is the team we're using. She is also in here. She is great for this fight as long as she doesn't die. And what we figured out is in Fire Knight is that we need the shielder, which is Valerie, um, to keep us alive so that she can get to the boss. That was mainly the problem here, which is why she's in Lifesteal. We want her to keep her HP up, and we want Apothecary to keep her HP up, and we want Valerie to shield her so that she doesn't die. Same thing with Soul Bond. She's very squishy, so they can have issues in here if you don't build them correctly. But this isn't a Soul Bond video. This is a Crimson Slayer video. So we just want to focus on how awesome she is. But the second wave of this fight is where things get a little saucy. Armager has definitely helped because he keeps um, turn meter down. And that makes it so that you can, you know, not get hit by every single hero. Eventually, you're going to want to bring someone like Sill in, which is what we're going to be doing, as your turn meter reduction specialist and as your stunner. But he's better for turn meter reduction on the boss. We're just talking about the waves here. So there's, it is possible that we would remove somebody here. It's even possible that we could consider removing Valerie or Apothecary. I don't know. We'll see. Those are the best healers. So if the fight lasts long then we want to keep the healers in. If the fight's a short fight, we can do these fights without worrying about it, and we can bring them in and just, you know, beat the crap out of the boss quickly. There you go. That's what we want. We want slow speeds. We want to stop turn meters. There you go. That way we get another chance to kill. See, those are the, that's the kind of stuff that ends up, you know, winning a fight, is stopping someone from fighting. There you go. As long as one of them's asleep, I don't know why she would have done that. This is why auto's a little wonky. There we go, dead. Now the boss fight's a little weird. Sometimes if the if the boss fight goes my direction, this fight could be very short. If it doesn't go my direction in the beginning and they start using no skills like, you know, the speak their their A1s, then this fight takes a little bit longer. I think it's an average between three and four and a half minutes. That seems to be the average here. As long as Apothecary and Crimson use their three hit attack when they're supposed to. And if Armager gets his attack in right at the last second. There you go. Look at that. Take down the shield. Alright, shield's down. 
Now, remember, my team has saved and resisting. My team has very low accuracy, which is where this is now becoming a problem and why I said we're going to have to start really working on that um, and getting their accuracy up because they're going to miss everything. That's the main issue here. So if you have a team like this, I would highly recommend that you build their accuracy a little bit higher. Um, luckily for me, they haven't lost the fight yet. They just take longer to do it if they miss their debuffs, and that's it. So it's not like it's the end of the world. It just makes the, the fight like literally way, see, like way quicker. There you go. Turn meter, turn meter, see, because then you just keep dropping the turn meter, and he doesn't get a lot of, a lot of uh, attacks. And you're going to want to build your speed of armor a lot more, too. But Flowing Sword is basically that third extra um, reduced turn meter. So three turn meter reductions in here is more than enough to keep his shield down a lot. Um, I've had runs where he would drop to like a quarter HP, basically, while the shield was still down. There you go. He, that was the perfect time for him to hit because he can take the shield down and he can drop the, the uh, turn meter. There you go. Turn meter to zero. And now hopefully Flowing Sword will be ready to rumble soon. There you go. Decrease turn meter. She does insane damage, which is awesome. Soul Bomb. There you go. Flowing Sword, hopefully. There you go. She's not missing. As long as they don't miss, the shield just, boom, look at that. Still not being able to attack. This is, uh, this is where Crimson Slayer really shines, is in this fight. And if she can get the heal reduction, which she did, it's good too. But the good news is, is that the whole point of this team is that you don't want you don't want this guy to take a turn, see? I right, see he resisted that one. Hopefully we don't get another shield. We'll see. Probably will, maybe? I don't know. They might do it. They're going to do it. Yep, boom. Look at that. Four minutes. So it just really depends on when they actually get the shield down and if they can keep it down and when the, the cycle works. Sometimes it works on auto. Sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, if you're going to manual this fight, it, you could probably bang it out you know, a little more efficiently, but it'll still take long because you're going to be clicking buttons. Um, so there you go. She's not the damage specialist. Again, as you can see, Soul Bomb is the damage specialist. She's more utility than attack, but she is still attack. Um, and Soul Bomb is just a monster, so we can't really we can't really compare the two. Oh. So yeah, that's uh, that's Crimson Slayer. Oop. And like I said, you can also use her in the Spirit Keep because she has the heal reduction. It's not the best version of heal reduction for it, but it helps you get through the fight quick. Um, it'll keep her from healing all the way back up, which is all you need at this point. Uh, once you start getting into like stage 20, yeah, you're gonna need 100%. Um, well, I mean, I don't even know if you're gonna need it depending on what attack heroes you bring in. It is possible that you could just do 50% and just get a whole bunch of debuffs like poisons and HP burns on her, and then it would burn through her HP faster than she can heal. So it could still work at later levels. But we're talking about mid-game, and for mid-game, Crimson Slayer is a beast. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we just wanted to kind of do a nice little quick overview of what we use her for, how we built her, and you know what her future is. Her future is really just building her with better gear. And I have a feeling once she gets to about 40, 45, 50k power, she's going to start really shining a lot more than she does already. I don't think I'm going to be pulling her from that team for a little while. Uh, not even because it's hard to level hero 60, but because she actually does have really good utility. So don't sleep on her if you uh, have pulled her in the beginning of the game and you need help with certain things. I mean, especially if you're in the stage 15 area of the game, this is, Crimson Slayer is one of the best, literally one of the best heroes at stage 15 uh, dungeons that you could probably build to help you get through your hard challenge of beating it 10 times on auto. So yeah, that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to see in these videos about the heroes. I definitely would like to bring them into Faction Wars too, but it just wasn't the day for that. And I wanted to get another little, you know, spotlight on Crimson Slayer. So this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and you guys take care.